I think it was like your last Netflix special. It was really a joy for me, man, to, to, to watch that. And to me, from like an outsider, it seems like that's easier for you, making yourself almost like the butt of the joke. Yes. And, 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 but that's also, I think, what you're saying has like caused you a shit ton of fucking pain or a shit ton of like feeling yeah. betrayed or feeling like j j anger, whatever that is. Um, when I started doing comedy and, you know, I didn't have many friends. I had like two that I would hang out with or my mom. I think I was like, I can make fun of myself better than all of you. Like, like, you know, you know, and it became sort of this, like, it made me feel like Teflon because, you know, I was just like, whatever joke you say, I, I have a better one about myself. And also you're doing it on stage, so you're getting some sort of positive some feedback. some sort of positive yeah. feedback and just like, you know, when you, I'm the first person to laugh, you know, at myself. And when you do that, it opens up the crowd to, okay, so he's not taking himself too seriously. It, it, it's just like a, an approach for comedy that I think I like. Like my favorite stand-ups do that, like Burr, Chappelle, Eddie, like all these guys, they tell personal. I love one-liners, I love Rodney, but like, you know, I don't know anything about him after the thing. Right. Uh, aside from like, you know. Yeah, yeah. And I love yeah, that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But like my, the people I, I, I like to like know them. And I'm like, I, that way you hear their next special, they're talking about their wife. You, you remember from the other one and like, you grow with these artists, you know, same with like music, you love their story or whatever. So. I always loved that style of storytelling, um, and I felt that you could not get away with more, but you, you can if, if you, you know, shoot yourself in the foot first, and then it opens up for you to have, you know, people are more receptive to hearing what you have to say because you're not, you know, coming from an ego standpoint. It's an egoless standpoint. Right. It's more of just like, hey, this is an idea. This is fun. I'm just trying to have fun. So that's why I always took that approach. And then, you know, because of the way my career turned down and the things that happened it just opened the floodgates yeah. and it turned on me and now the last couple of years i've just been trying to dial it back where like i don't want to not be open i love talking to people i love connecting with people some of the best conversations i've had have been at like bus stations with random dudes that are like hey i saw this weird thing you spoke about whatever and then that's like why you do it okay. you know that's like what makes you happy You're like oh i'm so glad i did that i don't know why i was questioning myself for doing that um but you know now I'm trying to just share when it feels appropriate or sh or to share. I don't feel like I have I owe anyone anything. Sure. But um there is that certain element of like, you know, now cuz of the internet, you, you sort of feel like you do have to kind of defend yourself a little bit where you're like, "Hey man, like no." Mm -hmm. You know, so it's it's a tricky situation to be in cuz you don't want to come across as whiny or not grateful cuz I'm very grateful and I, I wouldn't know. change a fucking decision I made cuz okay. I love the lessons I was taught uh, the people I met I'm not mad at anyone uh, I don't hold any anything on anyone I, I think everyone's just trying their best and you know so that's just how I'm trying to live my life but it's 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 a hard it's a hard thing to navigate because you'll do something and then somebody will do something you'll be like hey and they're like well you fucking did you're a movie it. about your yeah, life that's you right, did that's a right. and you're like all right yeah that's I get it, I get yeah, it you yeah. know so that's why I'm trying to like, you know, just act, be an actor if, in something and not just be what people think is me. They'll right. write, they'll, like you'll show up to set and you're playing yourself and they're like, hey, I'm a big idiot with a dick that smokes weed. And yeah. you're like, Jesus Christ, yeah, is, yeah, this, yeah. Is, this is what Oscar winners think of me? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh yeah, my yeah, yeah. God. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that's humiliating. Like, oh my God. And like you do it because you want them to like you and you want to work with people. And that was my thing for a bit, but it doesn't have to be my thing forever and as i grow and learn it was one of your things bro yeah I mean, it was one of your things yeah. I mean, like it's not one of your th right and i mean yeah. like i think that like it, the genius always... was like oh it's like but i guess I, I guess it's like to think that that doesn't come at a cost yeah. and what i really like well, it's like that 9 11 thing john like people would be like oh he's probably just talking about his dead dad all the time it's like yo i made two jokes about my dad in a span of like 15 years like to act like i'm just like this like feel bad for me my dad right. like that's just such bullshit and it makes me feel like so small and shitty and like i'm trying to share little jokes here and there about him because like i like to keep that memory alive my dad was a great dude like why is that a fucking problem Fuck it, eh? and like it i get defensive it's and my again, family and you know and like anybody who's like fucking risked anything as a yeah. fucking artist like to understand yeah. the boldness again and the bravery to, to to fucking do that like going to that going to that spot it's like like i really fucking admire and commend the fuck out of you for doing it. and you when you do you you're still going to go inward right yeah, i mean like i'm always going to go inward but i think i i think there's a place for everything and now I learned that like okay me on stage with a microphone where I have full control and I could tell what I ha the way I want to tell it 
that's the spot because that's my stand up. That's what I w- that's the outlet I want for it. And I guess the the struggle or like where I'm dealing with it and I'm getting better at is like you got to just let people talk until you get you get to yeah. and your moment will come. Yeah. And it's about patience. And that's like okay. something I'm not good at. Yeah, it's yeah. like being patient and you can't please everyone you yeah. can't fix every little thing yeah. some people are gonna think things that they heard on a website or saw on a fucking thing or someone's brother told them or whatever and there's nothing you could fucking do about it yeah like, the only thing you can control is like who you have around you that's right what you put your energy into and like who loves you and who you love back and that's something like it's a hard thing to it's like a weird thing for me to even grasp now because like i've lived in discomfort for so long where that became comfortable so now I actually have people around me that love me and it's weird. And it's that's that's like a whole new thing I never thought of. It's like, oh, it's weird being Can you explain happy. that weirdness? It's weird being happy. Yeah. It's weird like being like I was like at home the other day and I was talking to my girl and my friends and I was like, I feel fucking like weird, like something like wrong and they're like, What? I'm like, Nothing's wrong. Yeah. What is that? Is that like a peace of mind? Is it's that like, what you yeah. I don't know what I think I just like look, I hate to be that guy that's like anytime something looks up some because everybody gets kicked in the dick and everyone gets kicked in the dick it's the biggest to them because it's their life so no one's struggle is bigger than anyone's because it's theirs you know no matter what the magnitude or who you are or whatever it hurts just as much okay so like i i believe like everyone's struggle is very big to them and i just i like was just like crying i was just like i i, I always feel like the walls are gonna close in or something's gonna be ripped out and um I've been doing a lot of therapy, like trauma therapy, trying to figure out why. I think uh, there's obvious reasons why with the PTSD from childhood or whatever. And the sentence that like we've, my therapist and I have agreed on is like, my dad told me he was gonna pick me up from school on 9-11. I got picked up by my mom. She didn't tell me what was going on for like three days. And she kept telling me, "Ah, dad's at work, coming home, whatever, I had no idea. And then I watched, I was, I, my mom was like, you're just grounded, you're not allowed to watch TV. And I was like, what? Like, I didn't do anything. And then one night I turned on the TV and I just saw my dad on TV. And I was like, oh, okay. And they're like, he, these are all the firemen that are like dead and all that shit. So I was like, and then I had to talk to my mom. And it was weird because like, we didn't know he was dead for like three weeks. They were finding people, you know, they're pulling people out of shit. And there was just some sort of hope. And like, it was just up and down. And nobody knew how to deal with it like my mom was fucking like 30 like she doesn't like i'm about to be i wouldn't know what the fuck to do and i that's why like as i get older i'm like man my mom was awesome i was like Mm. fuck she really loves me like damn Mm. like fuck that was like rough Mm. so nobody knew the right way to deal with it and you know whether or not that's right or wrong it still fucks the kid up or whatever so i have this and i also have bpd and a little PTSD mix which is borderline personality disorder and so the definition of that is fear of abandonment so you know dad says he's coming to pick you up he doesn't for life I'm just like I don't believe anyone and I'm trying to learn how to believe people and Hollywood isn't exactly the greatest place to to learn that skill dude yeah you know so like I and you've been in it for a fucking minute at starting at a young age so I went from like traumatic life to like new created high school traumatic life because yeah. like Hollywood's like high school where it's like the cool kids and the dicks and fucking but the cool people are actually the quiet people it's like fucking weird and um, <laughs> it's you know so now you know it's the worst place for me to grow but I'm you know, I love this shit and uh, I'm gonna do my best I can and just keep doing that but that's I think where it comes from and that's why I have a hard time trusting and believing people and it's been an issue throughout my whole life like it's 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 you know because i just someone will tell me something and i just it doesn't register yeah. it's starting to with some people because yeah. they've been around long enough yeah and I've can you been, give me an example of that like something that's working like a technique that you're using or like something or or just i mean it, it, i just like i look at people's character and you know i've never had to i go do you have to question this person has this person fucked you over in any way has this person lied to you has this person ever been anything but whatever or if you had anything with them did you work it out is this guy a dog is this your dog and that's you got to fact check yourself and if the facts check out you can't let yourself think that way you actually have to trick your brain because your brain after a while becomes used to trauma it becomes used to being hurt becomes used to being fucked over so you'll have that mentality and have that attitude and you might even like make it happen 
because you're so insecure and you might create a problem out of nothing and that's a lot of times that's what's happened and how do you check yourself on that like how do you how do you become how do you become aware of that well it's just growth man like i used to i i used to, i've been self-harming since i was like a kid you know i used to like cut and up until you know, like a year ago i used to cut and uh used to bang my head against walls because like when if i couldn't deal with something like if someone told me something sad or like i something that i couldn't deal with i would like bang my head against the wall hoping i would pass out because i just didn't want to be in that situation because i couldn't handle that and like over years and years and years it's it becomes less and less and less and you have to use these skills and there's this great workbook that i recommend it's called the dbt uh workbook it's dialectical behavior therapy and it teaches you these skills like okay you want to cut right now go take a cold shower listen to your favorite song jerk off fucking watch a movie like go call your friend like li literally like do anything do anything you can because uh, that feeling most of the time goes away after like 15 20 minutes it's just you get this surge you get this like feeling and you got to know it's not real. You got to, you have, it's fucking mind fuckery because you got to trick your brain into being like, no, you're wrong. You're trying to make me feel bad. You know, I'm actually good right now. And it's like, it comes from this, uh, BPD has, is very in common with black and white thinking, which is like something I still struggle with, but I'm got, I've gotten a lot better, but it's still pretty bad where like everything's either all amazing and everyone, uh, you're rocky, people throwing you fruit while you run, yeah, you know, yeah. or it's the worst thing in the world. Yeah, yeah. And I had to learn that, like, if one little thing isn't going the right way, that doesn't mean the whole ship sinks. That's right. It's just like, okay, remove that part, and you're okay, everything's fine. But you have to learn that. I, I would just lose, lose it from little things, um, and you have to learn how to you know work through that and the impulse like the the, the impulse to do something like cut or bang yeah. your head or something like that do you pay attention do you sort of like in, in whatever way you kind of keep account like of the kind of situations or the kind of triggers like yeah. what it makes you want to do specifically how i mean i i had to i had to do a bunch of shit like when i met john i was just coming out of like yeah. a, a lot of shit work, work on some like real anger stuff i had like real problems with violence uh, yeah. uh growing up you know you never lick it you know you never lick it but like you can you, you get a handle on it you can bit. man yeah. you can and you can actually i think even more so man i think uh, I, I think what's so like exciting and inspiring about it is i think you can make it work for you i think you really can i think you can make any i think in any crisis the there's way. a huge opportunity fuck yeah man hey what's going on everybody it's john bam bam the dog uh, first, on behalf of both of us and everybody from the Real Ones team, I just want to sincerely thank you guys for, for, for tuning in. The folks that I bring on the show, they're family to me, and uh, being able to tell their stories and bringing you into their world is something I'm, I'm just super proud of and, uh, again, grateful that you guys tune in. We've decided we want to take things just a step further. It's a Patreon community, and basically what that means is if you become part of this community, look, I already bored Bam Bam. If you want to become a part of this community, you're going to be able to hear episodes early and all that, ad-free and all that good stuff, but there's all this behind-the-scenes footage, all this stuff that we've shot um, that really brings you into the folks that we've had on the show, really brings you into their world. Live chats with me and the folks that I bring on the show to talk about their world, talk about the issues that they're dealing with, about their triumphs and their tragedies. Just go to Patreon slash Real Ones on this website that you see right there, right on the screen, that's right in front of you. This whole idea was um, something about building bridges and, 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 and bringing people together and um, bringing folks that often don't get the mic and, and giving the mic to them. So the fact that you guys tune in means the world. Anyways, again, thank you. Uh, be good to each other out there. Rock and roll. I'm gonna get a workout in a little bit with my man Eric Linden, stunt coordinator from The Punisher. He's coming all the way up because we are about to get after it. And when that's done, he asked me in the car, are you gonna have my shake ready? And I know what that means. Am I gonna have my Sun Warrior shake? They've got the active protein, but they also have this collagen protein, which is amazing. They also have uh, the Warrior blend, which is a little bit lighter if you're trying to cut. And uh, I believe in it. I believe in that Sun Warrior stuff. Go to www.sunwarrior.com dot com slash real ones.